Well, I didn't really get a choice because my, my father wanted us to play football and uh, I was too puny to even consider the rugby in that environment. And um, the other part where I always remember is that uh, football players used to have boots when the rugby players didn't, so that was a, a real motivating factor. And uh, well, I actually grew up in a real uh, strong rugby province in Taranaki and uh, you know, I used to sell ice creams on the terrace and everything, so really I've, I've always loved rugby, I've just never played it. To me, I mean, I've got great memories of, of you know, my childhood and, um, and, and, and New Plymouth where I came from. And, I mean, I'd sum it up like that. We spend a hell of a lot more time outside than we do now. And, you know, we didn't have computers. We didn't, you know, black and white TV. I still remember TV coming in and, you know, the excitement about that. But, you know, most of the time we were outside, so we were all kicking a ball or, you know, outside doing something. Whereas now you don't see that, you know, you're sort of, cut, you know, you're in some traffic jam or, you know, it, it's just, it was so much simpler back then. I'd left um, New Plymouth to go and play football over in the Waikato and uh, I was working at the power station. But in 81 I actually resigned and you know, it was good money in those days in the old power stations, you know, so, uh, but I actually resigned because, you know, we were sort of like, we were travelling quite a bit. I remember it was, it was a, quite a, a wet night and, and I know there was a great crowd. But I think my memory was it's, we were coming off the a, a back of a pretty abysmal tour to Fiji and um, New Caledonia. So it really was the start of a, a whole new era and I know some players were, were unable to come back. Um, and so to, to put that team out against Mexico, but you know, history says we won 4-0 and the crowd got behind us and, and for some reason we just yelled as a team and you know, there was five or six you know, newbies, um, including um, some people who went on to be quite famous New Zealand players. I think everyone just fell in love with the story. They didn't understand the story, it was, there was no ending, it was just happening, as, you know, it was rolling out in front of us and, uh, and it was just an amazing, you know, sort of like a never ending journey and people just somehow got involved in it. And, uh, but, you know, I, I know that, you know, a lot of rugby people got involved in it um, just because it was a sporting occasion and, uh, you know, we never sat there and we never traded on the fact that the, you know, the, the All Blacks or New Zealand was going through a rough time in rugby. Um, it will always be the national game and, you know, it, it conjures up great emotions for people. But, you know, I think the story just, was just so unique that it just and it kept developing and there was so much mystery about it and there was so much, it was so unique to New Zealand that, they couldn't understand the rugby players and, the, and you know, the, the other sporting codes, just what it meant by, you know, well, what do you mean you still haven't qualified or, you know, the sudden death scenario of it. As a young fellow in those days, it was sort of like everything was just an adventure, you know, when someone says, oh, you've got to go away, you know, and, you, know you win a game or you, you know, draw a game, you had to go away again. I mean, that was not a barrier to us, that was just more excitement and, um, and to, to finally get to Spain and, you know, we were treated like kings and... Uh, and I'm overriding memories. It was just a cool place to be, and it was cool to be, you know, you know, so much time, and you know, to be part of a group that was, you know, experiencing a, a really unique achievement. In the warm up, I was watching them warm up and taking corners, and I still remember one of them uh, taking corners with the outside of his foot and putting them on the crossbar, sort of four out of five. Well, that's interesting. And uh, um, yes, they, we were pretty pretty wrapped. They were playing the first team, so there was, you know, there was you, know, you get to play the superstars, and um, you know, it was a pretty exciting. And it was a magnificent atmosphere. I mean, you just have to be in a crowd with a Brazilian crowd, and you know, I've been lucky enough several times since to watch you know Brazilian team play at that, that level. But to play with some of those guys, they they were absolutely class athletes, and um, you know, they're a bit deceiving. You never think of them as, as athletes; you just think of them as fantastic ball players. But one thing that struck me was how uh, mobile they were, how fit they were. Here's Leandro. And Zico! What a cracker! That would have been a great goal against any opposition.